Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the channel. I'm Whitney, the owner, soapstress, and alchemist here behind Cheeky Goat Soapery. And literally behind because I'm behind the camera. Hola. Um, I had made these uh, wood tobacco and vanilla bars and um the other day and i very sadly apparently didn't hit record and um, i offered a video and then had no video to share so i'm just going to remake them and i'll share how i make them and then i'll share how i cut them to get um this nice wood grain appeal it's really really simple it's not hard at all um the trickiest thing might be your fragrance oil because all of this um, it's just from the fragrance oil, that brown color. The white here is titanium dioxide. And like the hints of gold that you can kind of see is just some mica oil um, that I add in as we go. So um, I'm ready to go. I'm just going to put this back where it belongs so I don't hurt it in the middle of my making. And uh, we'll make some soap. All right. So wood grain technique. Um, I There's a bunch of different makers who make this technique. Um, I had actually initially seen it done really well with, um, squeezy bottles, squeeze pipes. Um, and that was how I did them for the longest time. And then, um, I forget who it was. I think it was Lisa at I Dream and Soap did a video and someone else did a video too. This is the live solution going in. Um, and they just basically kind of did like a baby in the pot swirl slash line pour and then they just cut it sideways and it was wood and i was like uh that is so much easier and faster than cleaning out seven thousand squeezy bottles so yes please um a lot of the variation that you see that's so interesting in the bar i showed um is because of the fragrance oil and how i mix this in um that fragrance oil is uh really cool because it gets really really dark very quickly um so it's an interesting fragrance oil to use there's no colorant in that it's just the fragrance um but it's also really naughty and i really like this fragrance and it's worth how naughty it is and one of the ways i've tamed that is i just add more goat's milk usually i do a water discount um but i didn't do a water discount um, i did my normal 40 60 ratio and then added another uh, four ounces of goat's milk um, which makes this almost um almost crazy as far as how much milk is in here um that was a full 12 ounces you saw me pour in just now um but it makes this fragrance behave and that is what you need for this technique to work really well is a well-behaved fragrance or one that you can manipulate with your soap recipe and uh, to make it do that. Um, the other two big hints for controlling trace um, that I have learned over the years, um, mostly thanks to the Soap Challenge Club, um, is the temperature. You must keep your temperatures low um, at least for me to have a nice, soft, you know, smooth trace the whole time. Um, you don't have to do that. Obviously you can do whatever you want, but for me, that's what works best. So this was room temperature. My milk was actually cold. Um, and my lye was room temperature. I made it a few days ago. So I'm now adding a good chunk of the batter to this pitcher. And this is going to be the white. I'm not going to color it. So, or I say color, I'm not going to scent it is really the word we're looking for. Um, because again, remember, um, this fragrance misbehaves and it darkens and you can't really escape it. It tends to bleed, which I actually depended on to make this design. That's what makes the wood look so realistic is it's not just one color. Um, the fragrance kind of naturally does its own little thing, uh, which is why it's so successful. I also use this fragrance for a Soap Challenge Club uh, marble entry and uh, did pretty well with it too. So um, it's, it's, a good, it's a good fragrance for those kind of natural brown techniques because it has such an interesting look and it looks like real wood or real marble. So now that this is mixed to the side, You'll see I have another pitcher here, and that's important. You'll see why in a second. So now we're going to go ahead and add our fragrance oil to our 
soap batter. And it's not an immediate accelerator uh, like some are, um, but like I said, it can, can be a little naughty, hence all the extra milk in here. So I'm just gonna make sure this is well mixed. And doing it the way I do it um, can make your life a little tough because I can't see as well what I'm doing because it's not like this is like, you know, stark brown. Um, but when you add it all together, you can kind of see the pattern. So I'll show you. So we're gonna pour some in here. Not a whole bunch. I just like to kind of control a little bit more. I like to kind of control how much I have and make it easier on my hands. Now I'm gonna take the white and I'm just gonna make a little bit here, maybe a little back here, not a whole bunch. Cause again, I don't want oodles and oodles. Then I'm gonna take the gold mica and just do a couple drips, not a whole bunch. Said as I pour a bunch in. And now we'll take our mold and I'm trying to make it so you guys can see it, but I can do this easily. I usually do this kind of this way. Can you guys still see? Yeah, you can, okay, good. So now all you're gonna do is just take it along the side of the mold and go back and forth, right? So this is the motion you're gonna do. So, you're gonna get some of that mica right off the bat in there, which is why I try to put it back a little bit. And you're just gonna keep going nice and thin, nice and thin along the wall. When I start getting it to pool at the bottom, which it's starting to do now, um, I'm gonna get a little bit more in here. Let me add some more. There we go. I'll start doing some swirls like that. And just doing one every once in a while starts to form the knots that look so realistic. And a little bit more, one more knot over here, and we'll keep pouring. And I'm going to stop there and add some more white. Now you see why I have the rag here to kind of keep my position the same. And again, I'm just adding more batter in. Now when I added more batter in, it did mix with some of the white, so some of that real stark brown is not going to be as brown. That's okay. Because remember, when you saw that piece of, you know, soap I showed you earlier, it looks so natural, that's why. And again, some gold, gold, kind of in the back. I'm actually gonna swirl that just a little. Because if the gold's too clumped up, then you're gonna have like these pockets of oil and mica, and that's not ideal. So again, now we're just gonna go back to this again, back and forth, back and forth. And that's also what helps build some of that color in there. Now you can see this is setting up on me a little bit. It's not going into the previous one so much, which that's one of the dangers with this fragrance oil. It does set up, but that's okay. I'm trying to get a good couple whirls in here. And now I'm starting to get into just the wood batter, just the actual darker wood part. So I'm gonna go a couple more times. And again, trade out, dump more in. See, I bet you guys thought this was gonna be complicated. It's not, but it is starting to thicken up on me. So I do need to hurry a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of this white and a little bit more of this gold. Again, give it a little stir mostly to avoid that gold piling on me and get back to it. And I like the gold when it forms knots. I think it's really pretty. And then we're getting towards the spot where I'm not gonna be able to hold this tilted anymore. I'm gonna have to start straightening it out because I'm running out of room. One of the things and one of the best tips I can probably give anybody who likes to do these kind of pours is make sure when you start to straighten out, do it slowly. You know, don't, don't just slam it down. And I say that because a lot of times I'll see people that do these really nice tilted tigers and like you can tell exactly when they put the mold down. And it's because they weren't careful when they put it down. And that's, that's unfortunate because you have this really cool design and then you kind of, I don't want to say ruin it because, you know, it's still soap and whatever, but that probably wasn't what you were going for. So when you go to move it down again, 
take something and do it gradually like that. So it's still got a slight angle, just not as much. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm getting towards the end here. See, I told you guys this wasn't complicated. Now I don't do a crazy top on this and that's because we are not going to see a whole bunch of that top. Um, that is going to be either the very top of a bar or the very bottom of a bar. It's not, it's not usually something you're really going to see because of how we cut this. But I'll show you that next. Well, next for you guys, it'll be tomorrow for, for me. Ooh, I put that in the way. Hold on. Let's move him over there. Thank you. Yes, I said thank you to it. Sorry for the cat in the background. He does not understand why he's not allowed in here still, even though it has been months. So you can see I need to kind of level it off a little bit, but I'm not going to really um, let it go down hard. I'm just kind of slowly tilting my hand back. I'm not sure if you can really see that on the camera, except that the soap is moving. Okay, so now I'm um, gonna put it straight, give it a jiggle, and we'll do the last bit. So it wasn't that hard, right? Is it easier than you guys thought it was gonna be? Harder, simpler, more complex? You know, obviously if you were using a fragrance that behaved better, you could do a much more intricate design. Like the bottom was really nice and layered, but now as I'm getting to the top, it's starting to thicken a little bit. So it's gonna be more diffuse instead of that real sharp, tight grain. Um, but again, natural wood isn't always the same thing, right? It has different appearances. So get all that in there. And I have calculated extra in here because this is my husband, Mr. Cheeky's favorite smell. So I always make extras for him. Okay. Plus, all the, now look how good the white is behaving. Remember, it wasn't scented. So you can see how much this fragrance oil is a little naughty. The other reason I don't mind adding in the extra white, even though it's not scented in that little bit of gold, is this is trying to set up. So by having that white in here, it gives me a chance to kind of soften it a little bit and still get a decent pour out of it, even though it's starting to thicken. So again, we're just going to stay on the same side we've been working on. Don't, don't switch sides. The only reason I might switch sides towards the end here is that it's going to thicken so much that it may not push, but it's still pushing over for me. So don't, don't be wimpy. Don't be afraid to keep on pushing it. All right, that's about as much as I'm gonna get in there. Probably more than I should try to get in there. And I am going to go clean this up. And um, I'll probably, I'll do it on camera. I'm just gonna push this in a little bit because I don't want soap outside the mold. But I don't want this to be um, textured. I want it flat. I want it flat because remember, this is not going to be a top that you're going to really see, except for like maybe like one or two bars. Um, I'm like, really, really, I should probably do this in a different mold. Um, but I know these molds, I know how much they take, I know how to work them, they're my favorites. So um, that's why I continue to use them. Like, really, I should probably do this in like a slab or something. It's more, um, the word I'm looking for is, uh, better design to get the size bars that I want. So, come on. I said I want it smooth and I'm sitting here playing with it. See? That's how you know you're addicted to soap making. You should stop and you just keep doing it. But now I'm going to try to get it smooth. All right. Smooth, 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 smooth. All right. That's that. I'm going to go put this in a little sample mold and, uh, that's it. I'll be back. Uh, it'll be my tomorrow. It'll be your couple seconds from now. And I'll show you how to cut this. Thanks for watching.
Hi everyone. So it is the next day and I'm going to explain um, how I cut it to get this look. Um, so here is, how to do this without getting my chest on the screen. Here's the soap. Can you guys, yeah, you can see that. Here's the soap. Isn't it pretty? So the way you cut this, you can do this in two ways. Um, you can either cut it a piece here and then cut it from this way in so it'd be like cut 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 um that looks let me grab a bar where did i put it i have one over here um you maybe no not you you no not you you no also not you it's the problem when you do a lot of batches of the same fragrance out here so if you cut it from the side going this way this is what it'll look like, which is, is nice, it's neat, but it's not what I want. If you cut it straight, like a regular loaf, it's going to look like, where are you? No, you're in here, no? Also, no? Ah, here. It's gonna look like this, which is really cool. Um, I actually, this um, reminds me of Tree Marie's line pour technique, if you've seen um, that. Um, so that's what it looks like from the front. So if I cut it like this, that's what it would look like. So how do we get this? Well, um, I do the super scientific way of taking a bar. So this is a bar cut the regular way, right? Like it was like this, I cut the loaf, whatever. So I am just going to take this off because it's about the right length of the bar and it's a little dirty. So I'm going to take this just to measure to make sure I'm right. And it is just a little, a little, little. I wonder if I can stick that on there just a wee bit to help guide me. How far? Like literally there. Does that work? Can I do that? No, it's not going to work. All right, I'm just going to know that I have to stop here where that smudge line is because my soap gutter is so dirty. I probably should have cleaned those before I shot this video, but eh. Eh, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to pretend I am. All right, so we're going to cut here against the wall. So we're going to cut it here. See? Told you. That's what it looked like. And... Now, if I was a smart person, I would do this in a mold that gave me the exact amount of bars of soap that I wanted to, to make more of this, but I'm not smart. So see, here's what the inside cut looks like. All right, so now we have to, these I tend to make into like just little skinny slices or little blocks of wood. I cut them this way in half. Um, so they end up looking kind of like this and they'll be for sale in the release as a block of wood. Um, because, I don't know, it's going to look cool. All right, so now we put our little thing back on, and I am going to take a half a second and clean it. Please subscribe to my channel where you watch me clean my filthy equipment before I shoot a video. Hooray! Um, all right. Put you back on, hopefully. And I'll probably get questions on where I got this um, cutter from. This is from Custom Craft Tools. And I love this cutter. Um, I would, there's a couple changes I would make to it maybe. Um, but for the most part, I really like it. And the changes I would make to it are more, I would like it taller, the arm. Why can't I get things back in here? This is your home, go in your home. All right, there we go. Are you in your home though? Okay. Everybody's in their house? All right, good. All right, so now we're gonna put it on my normal bar sizes, which is, yeah. And now we cut it. All right, so this is the loaf straight up, right? This is, this is the top. We're gonna just turn it this way. Ta-da! <sighs> Sorry, I'm gonna good mood today so you guys get to listen to me make weird noises and now we cut it like so and 
it looks like wood. And tomorrow when it's had some time to air out, it'll, it'll look like this. So let's cut some more. Move these out of the way. And I tried to do some more knots in this as I was doing it. Um, so we'll see how successful I am. Um, some of these might get a little muddled, but that's okay. That one's gonna look really woody. Kind of sounds dirty when I say it like that, doesn't it? Don't mean it to. Oh, that one's gonna look really cool. Can already tell. And the reason I put the gold mica in there as um, loose in the oil, it helps add a little bit of dimension because this is gonna turn really dark brown, right? And then the next day, part of what makes it look realistic is you get like those little flecks of the gold. I'm wiggling it so you can hopefully see, like right in here there's some in, in this whirl. So that's, that's why you do it that way. Um, you can, you know, you can do it your own way. You can make this your own. It's not, it's not anything revolutionary, but it's what works for me. So I hope, A, that I get the cat hair off of me. Thank you, cats. Um, I hope this helps, and I hope that you can now picture it and how to do this. So I remember yesterday, or, well, last night when I was doing the video, which would be right now for you guys, I was complaining about how flat I couldn't get this because that's gonna be, the, <laughs> that's gonna be what it looks like. That's a little annoying, but that's all right. But it really bothers me, I complain it off later. Worst case, those little ones like that are usually just bars that my husband um, keeps for his collection because this is his favorite smell. So anyway, I'm just gonna cut the rest of these and uh, thank you for watching and I hope that helps.